So when we deal with motion in two or three dimensions, we establish the position of a particle with a position vector r. And the name itself suggests you are establishing the position of a particle. Now, this is a simple vector extending from the origin to the particle. And in two dimensions, we write it in the unit vector notation as r is equal to xi plus yj, where x and y are the scalar components of the vector. And if the particle is moving in three dimensions, we just add one more vector component that is zk and write it as r is equal to xi plus yj plus zk. So as an example, here we have this ball in two dimensional space whose position can be represented with a position vector r equal to 20i plus 30j. That is, it is 20 meters along the x-axis from the origin and 30 meters along the y-axis from the origin. And let us call this position vector r1. So you see, x and y help us to establish the particle's location along the coordinate axis. And we say that this coordinate system is our reference frame or frame of reference, whichever order you wish to say that. And this origin is our reference point, which in simple terms means that all measurements will be done keeping these x and y coordinates in mind. Or in other words, when we are solving a problem, we will not jump onto another reference frame like this and start measuring displacement or velocities in this reference frame. Now, let us say two seconds later, the ball has moved to this position. Then its position vector can be written as R2 is equal to 30i plus 50j. And one thing you would have observed by now is that a position vector always extends from the origin to the point. So here, displacement of the particle can be written as delta R is equal to R2 minus R1 or delta R is equal to 30i plus 50j minus 20i plus 30j, which equals 30 minus 20 i plus 50 minus 30 j which equals 10 i plus 20 j and what does this mean exactly it simply means that the ball has moved 10 meters in x direction and 20 meters in y direction between the two positions so you see once you write the position vector in i j k notation delta r can be found doing some basic algebra. In a more general way, if r1 is equal to x1i plus y1j and r2 is equal to x2i plus y2j, then delta r is equal to r2 minus r1, which equals x2i plus y2j minus x1i plus y1j. Or r2 minus r1 is equal to x2 minus x1 times i plus y2 minus y1 times j, which can also be written as r2 minus r1 is equal to delta x. That is x2 minus x1 is written as delta x plus delta y j. And this essentially means that the displacement vector delta r is nothing but a vector sum of displacement in x direction and y direction. And if you're working in three dimensions to find delta r, all you need to do is add displacement in z direction as well. So your equation becomes r2 minus r1 is equal to delta xi plus delta yj plus delta zk. So let us do a problem. And what we have here is a spider that crawls on a wall. And I'm not really sure whether a spider crawls or climbs. Let us say it climbs and the x and y coordinates of the spider as they change with time are given as x is equal to minus 0.31 t square plus 7.2 t plus 28 
and y is equal to 0.22 t square minus 9.1 t plus 30. So the first question is what is the spider's position at t equal to 15 seconds. So the position vector r of the spider can be written as r is equal to xi plus yj where the x and y values are given in the problem. So we can say that at t equal to 15 seconds x is equal to minus 0 0.31 into 15 square plus 7.2 into 15 plus 28 which is equal to 66 meters and y is equal to 0 0.22 into 15 square minus 9.1 into 15 plus 30 that equals minus 57 meters. So we can say that the spider's position vector at t equal to 15 seconds is r is equal to 66i minus 57j. And on the x-y axis, the position vector would look like this. So the second question is, what is the magnitude of this position from the origin? That is the length of this position vector and also the angle this position vector makes with the x-axis. So the magnitude will be r is equal to root of x square plus y square, which equals root of 66 square plus minus 57 square which equals 87 meters. So the length of this vector is 87 meters from the origin. And direction will be theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x which equals tan inverse of minus 57 by 66 which equals minus 41 degrees. We can also plot the spider's position at various other times as well and this is how it looks. So we can learn a lot of things from this graph. For example, we can say that its position vector at t equal to zero seconds is this, or at t equal to five seconds is this, or at t equal to 10 seconds is this and so on. Or you could find the displacement between any two times, say t1 and t2, by subtracting the position vector at time t2 from position vector at time t1. So if you ask what is the displacement between t equal to 15 seconds and t equal to 20 seconds, you will say that delta r is equal to r2 minus r1, that is this minus this. So let me write this as r20 minus r15 and we can say that R20 is this and we know R15, so the displacement equals this. So you can see an understanding of position vectors is the foundation to motion in two and three dimensions. But if you really want to get good at this topic, I would suggest you head over to this playlist and please do give a thumbs up if you like the lesson and see you in the next video.